I'm interested in silver precisely because it's disappointed people. I'm I'm interested in silver precisely because uh, your audience, uh, who probably had some expectations around the year 2000 and 20 around silver, uh, was disappointed. I'm interested in silver because it's unpopular, it's out of favor, and it's regarded as dead when they're hated and enjoying the arbitrage from hated to unhated is the easiest money that's made in speculative markets. Silver is one of the most popular metals in the world, serving the dual role of being a monetary and industrial metal. As a monetary metal, silver's popularity and value are only next to gold. As an industrial metal, silver is used in the making of many everyday objects, including jewelry, silverware, coins, solar panels, cell phones, and several others. The white metal is the best thermal and electrical conductor of all the metals, making it ideal for electrical applications. It also has antimicrobial, non-toxic qualities that make it useful in medicine and consumer products. Silver is the best reflector of visible light known to man, which is why it is perfect for jewelry, silverware, and mirrors. Silver is also malleable and ductile, meaning it can be flattened into sheets or drawn into thin, flexible wires. Meanwhile, its high photosensitivity is also very appreciated in film photography. We've not even mentioned the hundreds of ounces of silver used in missiles and torpedoes. We could go on and on about the many uses of silver. Yet, silver prices cannot be said to be particularly commensurate with the metal's value. Silver reached an all-time high of $49.51 per ounce in April 2011. More than a decade later, not only have we failed to get anywhere near that high again, but silver prices are now down to $23.72, an over 52% decline from previous highs. It is then no surprise that silver investors are extremely disenchanted and disillusioned with the asset. To say that the metal is thoroughly hated in many quarters will be an understatement. Yet renowned investor and speculator Rick Rule believes that the white metal is a generational play that could and would fetch investors hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions when the right time comes. According to Rick, for every reason not to invest in silver, there are several others to keep faith and continue stacking until the story changes. We will now bring you clips from Rick's recent interview with Resource Talks. The legendary investor talks about the many importance of silver and why he remains and will continue to remain a silver bull and speculator despite low prices. Please watch, share and like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks and enjoy the video. I remember, Antonio, when you and I were discussing uranium uh, a year and a half ago and some of your constituents were asking whether or not we'd lost our minds when they're hated and enjoying the arbitrage from hated to unhated is the easiest money that's made in speculative markets. And the fact that from a speculative point of view, silver is dead in the water. Uh, and from the point of view that it has disaffected so many people who were attracted to it in 2020 and 2021 is precisely the reason. Now, let's get around to the basics of your question. Why silver? Silver is the most volatile, I would suggest, of the precious metals. I'm defining the precious metals to be gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Silver traditionally is uh, a second half mover meaning in precious metals bull markets, the markets are generally led by gold. Once the trend is established and the narrative is, is established, silver, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure of the reason, perhaps the lower unit cost, moves further and moves faster than gold. My first attraction to silver, of course, came in the decade of the 1970s. The cause for that attention was the fact that the silver price moved from, if my memory serves me well, $1.20, to $50, uh, which was certainly a dramatic move. I'm not trying to say that I caught the bottom or that I caught, that I caught the top, but I caught enough of the middle that it attracted my attention and has for the rest of my life. And as dramatic as the moves in silver are, the moves in the silver stocks, possibly because the population of them is so few, is even more extravagant. During that period, the 1970s, one silver stock, Coeur d'Alene Mines, moved from 10 cents to $65. So I would say that there are, from a fundamental point of view, a couple reasons to be interested in silver and silver stocks. But you have to be, I would suggest, first of all, a speculator. And you have to be, I would suggest, a contrarian. 
the easy money will be made in silver and the silver stocks simply from the arbitrage between hated and disgusted and unhated, just as we saw in the uranium stocks. The easy money in the uranium juniors happened as a consequence of them becoming simply less hated. And that will happen with silver too. Silver is unique, uh, I think, in ways that your listeners need to understand when they're trying to comprehend silver. First of all, most silver doesn't come out of silver mines. <laughs> so the supply side is a really interesting conundrum of new mine supply. Last year, I believe 18% of the new mine supply of silver came from silver mines. The rest came from copper mines, gold mines, and lead and zinc mines. So trying to forecast mine production based on the silver price is a fool's errand because gold prices and copper prices and lead prices and zinc prices are more important to silver production than silver prices are. And equating mining costs around primary producers is an illusion too, because those costs only pertain to 18% of mined production. Most silver as a consequence of it being a byproduct or a co-product, uh, requires from a mining standpoint only the processing of the silver stream. The costs are paid for by other metals. So the primary cost of production of silver is often less than people think it is. During the interview, Rick provides some other important details about silver supply and demand, details he believes a majority of the investing public does not have access to. According to the legendary investor, as silver prices rise, its supply rises primarily for two reasons. The first is recycling. At low prices, recycling silver is less efficient and more cost-effective. That changes when silver prices rise. Secondly, the above-ground stockpiles of silver are unknowably large. Rick explains that the precious metal is still considered a store of value asset, particularly in South Asian countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. When the U.S. dollar, in which silver is primarily denominated, gains against the local currencies of these countries, investors sell some of their silver holdings. All of these factors, in addition to the constant manipulation of prices, contribute to the situation in the silver market today. But Rick believes things are about to change, especially with the increasing adoption of silver for industrial uses. Let's get back to the interview. So, the supply of silver is very difficult to understand. The demand side can be similarly difficult, although it's important to note that right now at these silver prices, there is a supply deficit, which is to say the amount of silver produced in all sectors, primary production, co-production and recycling is substantially less than global consumption for fabrication. It's important to know that. What is unknowable, at least by me, is what the above ground inventories are <laughs> and where they're available for sale. So the fact that there is a primary deficit, while it's relevant, is a very difficult thing to gauge fundamentally because most of the supply that's ever been mined still constitutes in some way, shape, or form supply. Silver bulls, if there are any left other perhaps than myself, could get solace from the fact that industrial utilization and application of silver is growing very rapidly. The solar industry, as an example, doesn't exist without the reflective properties of silver. All of the new solar panels that you see in Northern Europe where the sun doesn't shine are of course dependent on, pardon me, on silver. Uh, but importantly, uh, new utilizations of silver occurring. It is fairly durable. It's fairly malleable. It's fairly conductive. And as a consequence of that, and by the way, it's cheaper than gold, of course. As a consequence of that, the utilization of silver in the fabrication of electronics is growing rapidly. But silver is also a superb germicide, uh, which means that medical applications water treatment applications and sewerage treatment applications of silver, making use of its germicidal properties. Probably the fastest growing new technological innovations around silver. And I think it's important for people to note that. One of the things that I've always laughed about with regards to the gold market is that with regards to gold, we usually take it out of a hole in the ground called a mine. And then we put it in a hole in the ground called a vault. With regards to silver, an awful lot of it is used. Now, some of it is, of course, as we said before, recycled. Uh, it comes back into supply. A lot of it is just plain used. And I think that's important. The price 
of silver, however, does not seem to be set by supply-demand imbalances, perhaps because the supply is so difficult to understand and forecast, as is the demand. A lot of silver is held off balance sheet, particularly in South Asia. And it's difficult to know exactly what demand is there because people are using it precisely because it isn't a government currency. Uh, It's used as protection from their government. Uh, And those people are wisely unwilling to disclose uh, wealth that they are trying to protect from their own governments. This, I can tell you, when demand for silver, investment demand for silver picks up, the price of the stuff is extraordinarily volatile to the upside. I guess three times in my life, the silver pl- price flirt with 50 U- US dollars. The first time from a dollar twenty start. The second time, if my memory serves me well, from a $4 start. The third time, if my memory serves me well, from a $15 start. Rick Rule is a seasoned investor in the natural resource space with decades of experience, countless successful ventures, and on-the-mark calls. One of his most recent calls was predicting that uranium was about to go from most hated to highly desirable. He is predicting the same with silver based on the metal's increasing popularity in several industries and sectors and the extremely low sentiments among silver investors. By Rick's estimates, the wind is shifting from silver prices facing a headwind to silver and gold having the wind in their sails. He believes we are about a significant metals bull market, led by gold but championed by silver in the long run. Please share your thoughts on Rick Rule's interview. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.